Hello everyone, welcome to our episode of Showcase on Warframe. Today's item, the Angstrom. Now, think about the Angstrom is, I was a little irritated doing the ultimate build. Because for the first original one, I just completed the ultimate build, and then they announced the Prisma one. I was a little, a little irritated on that. <laughs> anyway, besides the point, the Angstrom is a very powerful secondary. Well, depending on how you use it, but it also can be a difficult one to use. Anyway, you can see the accuracy is fairly good, which is questionable. Charge rate, which is charged, is 1.5 seconds. Critical chance is at a measly 5% with times 2 multiplayer. Fire rate is 2, but that's questionable how you use it. Magazine of only 3, which will make sense when you see it, if you don't know how it works. Below is 2.5, which is a big factor for this weapon. Status is only 10%. And the trigger is a charged one, as you probably guessed with the charge rate and also starting with 425 blast damage right out the gate. So yeah, it's a bit of an oddball weapon, but it shares a lot more with the Call Star than any other gun. So where do you find this? So you go to weapons, during the marketplace, go to weapons, secondaries, and toggle blueprints, well if you want some blueprint that is, you'll find it there. Now to build it, it's actually pretty easy, aside from Argon, but you need 25,000 credits, 6,000 LA plate, which is a joke, uh, 400 circuits, about 900 salvage and two argon crystals, which the most annoying part of it is the argon crystals, since they expire after 24 hours. I don't know why those still are even a thing in this game. So tedious. But anyway, aside from my gripes about resource grinding, <laughs> now visually, the Angstrom's a bit of a odd one. It looks an incredibly large pistol, but it's a rocket gun. And well, from the James Bond movie, well. I thought, which one was that? Oh, I forget. <laughs> we recall they had rocket guns in that, and it's probably just as feasible in that movie as it is in actually Warframe. Inside, it's got a lot of intricate parts, which you never see, which is strange. But the glaring size of the weapon is quite something. Although, you can clearly see the rocket magazine on top, with all three rockets. Now, if you do increase the magazine size, it makes you wonder, is there going to be more rockets appearing? No, I'm not even sure how the animation would work, because I didn't increase the magazine size, but besides the point. So, when you here's a full cycle of firing. As you can see, when I hold the trigger, it absorbs all rockets in, or if you just pull the trigger once, it'll just fire one rocket. Once all, all the rockets are absorbed, you can see it fires, and in a spirit, split second, rockets fly out. So you got a whole bunch here. And you can actually zoom in on these things without too much trouble. They look a little weird, don't they? But if I advance time again, you can see that their spread is actually quite heavy, despite the actually seeing 26, well, yeah, 26 point something. It's besides the point, as you see, the spread's uh, quite large. And at this point, it blankets the entire area in front of me. Where if I'm aiming, it's pretty much an explosion. So, pretty neat. But now let's see that from real time, from my perspective, and from my losses. So you charge, you charge it up, and you fire, and everything in front of you explodes very quickly. So yeah, unique firing animation, but is it useful? Well... First, if we get on that, let's talk about the upgrade, the Prisma Angstrom. So, the Prisma Angstrom, they announced it right as I was completing the regular Angstrom Ultimate build, but the Prisma is an upgrade. Is it a huge upgrade? Well, no. But anyway, where do you get the Prisma weapons? If you don't know, it's from Barketeer, the Void Trader of the every second Friday. Similar to the idea of that weird traitor from the uh, Destiny game. I forget his name actually, I only saw him once. <laughs> Besides the point, it is actually quite uh, it's more worth it to get the Angstrom, despite it costing you lots of ducats and prime items to get said ducats. Okay, so what's the big change? Well, first and foremost, you got a better charge rate. It's l less than half. That's like one big thing right there. You want that. Now the critical chance has been doubled to 10%, but I find that a very very small point. There's not enough projectiles for me to warrant me to upgrade that. And also the reload speed's also not been halved, but significantly less, both 0.7 of a second faster. Which again, you can every time you hold the trigger and fire all three rockets, you need the reload, so that's a very good thing to have. So that's pretty much wraps up the stats. So it's always better to get Prisma. But now uh, here's an example of how fa faster it fires. Boom. I have no speed mods on this. There's no point. It's more than fast enough for most enemies. But I also noticed that the ammo pool is actually very small. You only got 33 rockets, with the magazine included. 
But as much as that's small, it only takes one ammo pickup to get majority of the ammo back, so I don't call it the hugest problem out there. A lot of enemies drop that. But there is another issue about the angstrom. As you probably might have guessed, well, can this thing kill you? Well, yes. As you saw, the distance is not very big, but at point blank, it will kill you. Okay, going on to my ultimate build. Well, as you've probably seen, uh, there's something immediately wrong with my ultimate build, but I'll address that in a second. So, you can see the accuracy I didn't touch. The fire rate, the charge rate is faster, thanks to Lethal Torrent. So it's almost instantaneous. And that includes the fire rate, but the magazine remained at 3. Your load remains the same. You can see the ribbon disposition for the ribbon is all five orbs. I cannot ex I don't know why. This weapon's not that devoid of use. I thought it would be a 3 or a 4, but no matter. The critical chance got 35% or 38%, it doesn't matter. This I don't call this a status weapon. But anyway, my damage. Because I got 10,000 viral, 19,000 radiation, and 7,000 blast. I gave this my triple double element touch, which a lot of people do. So, how I get this? Well, I got Horned Strike for base damage, Barrel Diffusion for damage, and then Lethal Torrent for more damage at fire rate. And then for elements, I got Deep Freeze, Prime Heated Charge, and then Pistol Pestilence, which always gets more status chance. I also got Flammation on there. Now, that increases Blast Range, the explosive range on each projectile. This can create more risk for yourself, but you wouldn't want to use this weapon in a close quarter environment anyway. So, I find this to be a better use for on this weapon. So, now, the reason why I don't have any critical chance, my ribbon kind of destroyed that, which is funny. So, as much as says, oh look, I got 150% more critical damage, yay. I thought it also got 270% damage, plus 180, 108 volt electricity added, and then negative 160% critical chance. <laughs> so that's funny. But it's funny, it's fine, because I don't consider this a critical weapon at all. Maybe it would be if I you have had a critical chance and, you know, the prime target cracker and private pistol gambit, but that's a lot of mods, and that's a... I don't find it truly worth it. Alright, enough of that. Let's go into the test. Take some Grenier, and some Lancers, and I'll jack them up to... First, gotta make myself invincible, so I don't want to worry about dodging. And I'll jack my, them up to uh, level 80. Yeah, level 80 will work. Alright. So, against Grenier, it's a little bit of a tough weapon to use because the Grenier like to spread out. They don't like to sit in one finite place and fire at you. They're more or less inclined to move around, but you get this one can kill them, even in one shot. Although you must get the majority of rockets to hit them. That's the little status chance effect on the radiation there. But yeah, since I have three elements and two of those three are very effective against Grenier, it's pretty darn efficient. But the only problem is you gotta be careful of your range, because the farther you're out of the way, the more spread your rocket's gonna be. Alright, so I did pretty good against Grenier. Well, against a few small group of enemies. Against lots of them might be a different story. Let's go against some Corpus. I'll take some Moas. Take 20 of them. And for the level, I'm gonna put them even higher. I'm gonna put them to level 100. 100 will be probably even a little bit less, but I think I'll get my point across. So level 100, I can charge a whole rocket and boom, kills the whole group aside for one. Because he's just outside some of the blast radiates of the rockets. So that's the catch, you gotta be in a perfect area if you want to get a whole group like this. You can see I killed, didn't kill anyone on the right side, but killed everyone left. The blast radius even with Flammation still is a little small, but Flammation makes a big difference. <laughs> it's the difference between killing half a group or 25% of a group. Alright, so it did excellent against the ball the corpus, which is what I expected. But against the charge here, I'll put him even a little higher, but this is a bad weapon to fight infestation with, because the majority of the time you're fighting infestation in closed corridors. These guys are melee range ball creatures. So fighting them like this is just asking for trouble. You're asking to get yourself killed. But it's incredibly effective though. It'll definitely level out whole groups, providing those groups aren't immediately on you. <laughs> So definitely powerful. Alright, but however, I'm not going to fight a uh, corrupted Grenier anymore, or a corrupted well, heavy gunner. I'm going to take it against this, the sentience here. Because it's a triple element weapon, how effective is it against against sentience, since they build immunity over whatever damage type you throw at them. So how about three element types of double? Now, I took it against the well, Basilisk here, I think it was pronounced, but there's a immediate problem. 
These guys love to strafe sideways, as you see, and I cannot ho I cannot hit this opponent very well with a slow rocket. <laughs> Even hitting the ground doesn't seem to comp accomplish too much. So let's hit screw it, and let's get the other one. <laughs> so that's a me a problem with this weapon, is the rocket's flight speed is not so great against really high, high mobile opponents. Now against the melee one, I'm not exactly impressed with the damage. I guess for when it comes to the sentience and the high levels, you need more DPS than raw damage. And let me tell you, Angstrom has pretty shit DPS. Not to mention, I always kept missing, like despite like being on like a, a quarter of a meter off my target reticule, I still would miss frequently. So this thing is still difficult to aim against very high mobile creatures and enemies. Going on to the pros and cons of the Prisma Angstrom, which almost all relate to the regular Angstrom in terms of pros, cons, and score. Okay, on the pros, it is an incredibly powerful secondary. You can easily fit it with the triple-double elements, so that's always a little bonus for when weapons have that. Alright, and the Prisma version is definitely faster to write and make it actually usable, like more comfortable to use. Now, that's kind of where the pros end. The cons are, however, the weapon's still incredibly awkward to use, given its bolt fire rate. The rockets are slow. The spread on, spread on those rockets are is immense. The weapon can easily kill you with it, so it's very self-user hazardous there. Yeah. Not to mention every time it's you charge up a shot, it must be reloaded. There's a lot of cons I can throw at this, but you kind of get the idea. So that's enough for pros and cons. Now for the score for the Angstrom. Damage, I'm going to give it 8 out of 10. This thing is not lacking in damage. It has plenty to spare. However, the accuracy is, I'm going to give it 3 out of 10. It's not the worst accuracy in the game, but damn is it hard to use with that heavy spread on it. Design, I'm going to give that a 5 out of 10. I like the idea of a rocket pistol, but the Angstrom is not the best rocket pistol in the game. <laughs> There are others, and there's others that do it better. So, ammo, a 3 out of 10. Now, as much as very few rockets you get, it's very easy to refill. You just need one ammo pick, one pistol ammo to pick up, and there's plenty of those. Miscellaneous, I'm going to have a 5 out of 10. It's effective against enemies, but not all of them. It, the rockets are slow. It has to be reloaded every time. It's just a lot of irritations attached to this weapon. So in total, I give the Angstrom 24 out of 50. It's bad, but just meeting that bad requirement given to all the awkward things that come with it. It's a powerful weapon with a lot of baggage, and that baggage is what holds it back, what other weapons don't have. So, is the Angstrom worth it? Well, in my opinion, the answer is no, it's not worth it. It's probably the reason why it has a disposition of 5 orbs out of everything else. <laughs> Because not a lot of people use it because it's just awkward. The Colstar does this, uh, I guess like, like the main competition for the Angstrom, the Colstar does everything better. It's more powerful, it's easy to use, and it's you got additional explosions for like more bang for your buck. But that's been showcased for today. I'd like to thank you all for watching. I hope to see you guys next time. Take care out there.